Well, welcome everyone to Outer's December webinar. Uh, today we'll be taking a deep dive into Outer's inaugural research report, The Digital Lives of Australians. Uh, I am Michael Lewis, Outer's Industry Relations Manager. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which I'm coming to you from today, the original home of the Butterong people of the Kula Nation, and would like to pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Shortly, Outer's CEO, Rosemary Sinclair, will take you through the key highlights of the report. Rosemary is joined today by Keith McGowan, Director at SEC Newgate Research, Outer's research partner, to discuss the findings and take your questions. If you do have any questions about the report or the discussion as it unfolds, submit them via the Zoom Q&A function on your screen. You can do that throughout the conversation today. Uh, on a final note, uh, Outer's webinar series will be continuing in the new year, uh, resuming in February. Uh, you can become a member uh, by going to our website and receive regular updates as they are posted. Uh, now I'll pass it over to Rosemary to introduce the report and tell us what it means about the digital lives of Australians. Rosemary, over to you. Terrific. Thank, thanks, Mike, and welcome to everybody uh, to Outer's final webinar for 2021. We're very pleased that so many of you have found our webinar series engaging, and we've really enjoyed the opportunity to connect with our members and industry friends um, on a range of really interesting speakers and issues. As Mike outlined, we're really thrilled today to discuss our inaugural research report into the digital lives of Australian consumers and small businesses. I know you haven't had the opportunity to read the report yet, but it is available on Outer's website and we'll put a link in the chat for ready access. As the administrator of the .au, it's our role to look after Australia's domain name space for the benefit of all Australians. And to do that effectively, we recognise that we need to have an in-depth knowledge of Australians' online experiences and how they change over time. This knowledge will also support AUDA to innovate and improve the .au for Australia and to facilitate innovation in the internet ecosystem and to grow the utility of the internet. So we're really pleased today to be able to share the findings of this research with you. Our aim is that the research will be a longitudinal study updated annually to track trends and see how Australians' online behaviours change over time. This will be valuable for Outer, of course, but we're really hoping that it will also be valuable for policymakers, industry, businesses and governments when they're considering how to best serve and engage with Australians online. The research was conducted on Outer's behalf by SEC Newgate Research. Newgate was engaged as our research partner because of their extensive experience with technology and media clients and research matters related to human behaviour for clients including Prime Minister and Cabinet, the Australian Energy Market Commission and the Council on the Ageing. In the course of the research, Newgate surveyed more than 1,500 Australian consumers and more than 400, uh, 400 small business owners about their online experience. Participants were asked a range of questions about their online behaviours and preferences, what activities they undertake online, what they find challenging, who they turn to for advice and what they'd like to see in the future. And we were thrilled to learn that almost 90% of Australians said the internet had a positive impact on their lives. And almost all, 98% of small businesses, depend on the internet as an invaluable tool for generating revenue and connecting with customers. However, Outer's research also revealed that Australia's consumers and small businesses lack confidence in using the internet with cyber security being a top concern. At least three quarters of internet users note concerns about security of their personal information online. And for small businesses concerningly, 22% reported they are so worried about cyber security that they use the internet less 
because of fears of being scammed or hacked. Despite that concern, the report also found that small businesses do not yet invest heavily in cybersecurity, with only 27% having established cybersecurity practices or policies, and only 31% of businesses with employees providing their staff with cybersecurity training. Additionally, sole traders report they spend about $200 annually on cybersecurity, micro businesses $500, and small businesses $3,500. Our respondents said they felt that there was no single official source on cybersecurity that they can turn to for online support and information. And we think this highlights the opportunities for more investment in education and support initiatives to boost the digital skills and confidence of Australians. Raising the general digital confidence levels for consumers and small businesses would help Australians better harness the benefits that can be delivered by the internet. For example, providing consumers with accessible educational resources on how to pay bills online or how to access digital government services or providing small businesses with resources to assist them to learn how to improve the security of their websites. Overall, we were pleased to hear that despite these challenges, the overwhelming majority of Australian consumers, around about 86%, feel really positive about the future of the internet. And both consumers and small businesses see it remaining an integral part of their day-to-day -day lives or businesses. That is just a skim over the top of this amazing piece of research. And to dive deeper into the findings, I'm joined by Keith McGowan from SEC Newgate Research. Keith is the Director of Research with SEC Newgate with over 15 years experience in qualitative and quantitative market and social research for a range of government, private sector and not-for-profit clients. Keith, welcome, and thank you for joining us today to discuss this interesting report, an issue of critical importance to those of us at Outer, and of course, to many of those in our audience. Over to you. Thanks, Rosemary. It's a pleasure to be here with you today, and everyone who has joined online, thank you. Um, I'm obviously biased, but I think it's a great report, which adds to the, the vast body of literature and discourse on the role of digital technology and the internet in our lives today. Um, so as Rosemary said, my name's Keith McGowan. I'm a director with SEC Newgate based here in Melbourne and I was the lead researcher for this study. Of course, it was by no means a one man show and I would just like to acknowledge the teams at both Alda and SEC Newgate who have worked tirelessly with me on this research over the past few months from conceptualizing it through to bringing it to fruition in the report we are launching today, so thanks to each of you as well. So I think um, in the interest of time, we might just uh, jump into our conversation. Um, and just a little reminder to webinar attendees, there'll be an opportunity for your questions a little later uh, in the session. And you can add those questions into the Zoom Q&A function, uh, and we'll come to them shortly. So let me start, Keith, with a, uh, a big background question. Uh, the study looked at both consumers and small businesses online experience. I wonder whether for context and for the audience who haven't had a chance to read the report yet, um, can you tell us a little bit about the different groups that you spoke to? Yes, indeed. So the study actually comprised two parallel surveys. So firstly, with the consumer survey, it included over 1,500 people aged 18 years and above from all around Australia. And within that uh, sample, we have a good mix of capital city and regional residents, as well as a good cross-section of various other demographic groups. The consumer survey included a telephone component, which allowed us to hear from consumers who are less active online. And we even had some who do not use the internet at all, although this was a very small group. The small business survey included 404 participants and it targeted owners or managers of small businesses with up to 19 employees. 
Within this sample, we have a good mix of sole traders, micro businesses with one to four employees and small businesses with five to 19 employees. Again, we heard from a good cross section of small businesses around Australia and in various industry sectors. So both of these two samples are statistically robust and representative of each population, which means the results provide a reliable benchmark that can be used to monitor changes over time. Terrific. So talking about the results, um, a key finding, as I said earlier, was that the internet was highly valued, whether we were talking to consumers or businesses. And I'd like to just look at each of those groups separately. Um, I wonder if you could just tell us a bit more about what it is that consumers value about the internet. Yes, that's right. The majority of consumers told us that the internet is important to them, that they use it every day in some way, and that it adds value to their lives. In fact, all but 2% said the internet adds at least some value, and nearly three in 10 said that the internet was invaluable to them, that they couldn't live without it. The internet has a positive impact for most people across a wide range of life attributes. The most positive impacts are felt in terms of uh, a source of information and learning, the ability to access goods and services online, uh, tools to manage their personal affairs, pursuing hobbies and interests, and relationships with friends and family. So there's a lot of functional value. The internet genuinely makes life easier and more efficient for people in many respects. But what consumers said they would actually miss the most without the internet is social connection, being able to use those online platforms to keep in touch with friends and family, especially those who live interstate or overseas. It's, it's really interesting because those of us who work in the internet, of course, um, can uh, sometimes get too focused on the technology and the technicalities of all of it. So to understand that the thing that consumers most value um, in terms of what it delivers is social connection, I, th I think is a tremendously interesting insight. Um, if we move now from consumers to small businesses, um, what were the different reasons that uh, small businesses value the internet? Yeah, so firstly, small businesses were even more emphatic than consumers in describing the value of the internet. Uh, some 44% of the small businesses surveyed said that the internet was invaluable to them and that their business wouldn't be able to operate without it. For them, the internet is critical for a range of business functions, especially uh, interactions with customers, uh, being able to promote and market the business online, uh, the ability to work remotely and from anywhere, and uh, for performance and productivity. So again, a lot of practical and functional value. But above all else, as you've touched on, the internet provides many small businesses with a vital revenue stream, whether that's through direct sales or bookings, or as the result of having an online presence. So put simply, many small businesses would be worse off financially without the internet, and that's if they were able to exist at all. Uh, it, it seems to me that the, um, the reasons that people are finding value are um, quite, quite different from the very early days of, you know, discussing what it is that the internet uh, might really deliver. And to see the practicalities for consumers in terms of social connection and for businesses to identify revenue streams and productivity, um, you know, both of those aspects are really important to the big topics that we've been discussing for the last couple of years around economic and social well-being. And that really takes me to uh, an interesting question, I think. I mean, we've done the survey in the second year of COVID restrictions and for some in our community uh, at the uh, end of a very long period of lockdown. Um, do you think that the findings have been uh, influenced by COVID? And we will be doing the study ongoing. So we'll know in 12 months whether your views are right or wrong. But what's your feeling as a researcher, uh, Keith, about that particular matter? Yes, undoubtedly, uh, many aspects of our daily lives have been affected in some way by COVID. And given how much of our lives are being lived online, it's inevitable that the survey was going to pick up some COVID effects. Uh, so the survey was launched in late October, uh, just after 
restrictions were eased in New South Wales. It was a matter of days uh, after those restrictions had started to lift. And some other states like Victoria and ACT were still under uh, lockdown restrictions while the survey was in the field. So the effects of COVID would absolutely have been reflected in participants' responses. Perhaps the most obvious effect is that emphasis on social connection that we just talked about. We all know about the border closures and, and other restrictions on things like social gatherings and uh, being able to visit other households. The internet has really stepped up and played a heroic role during this time. It's provided a platform through video calls and the like to enable people to see and talk with their loved ones uh, when they've not been able to, to visit them in person. Frankly, when we look at these results, it tells us that the past two years would have been a lot more challenging for many Australians without the internet. Yeah, no, very interesting. And if we go from that, um, uh, you know, experience of the importance of this platform and technology uh, to the matters of concern now, the study is very realistic. It's not all an upbeat story. Um, but the study indicates that Australian consumers and small businesses are not as confident um, as they could be or as we would want them to be. Um, I thought the focus on uh, cybersecurity was extremely interesting. We're discussing this, uh, if you like, at the highest levels, worrying about uh, critical infrastructure and cybersecurity uh, with colleagues at home affairs and in critical industries. Here, we've got a study that says equally consumers and small businesses are worrying about cybersecurity. I wonder if you could tell us a bit more about those concerns and what we know about what is driving confidence down on this particular matter. Yeah, sure. Uh, that confidence issue really comes through strongly in the research. In fact, less than half of the consumers surveyed said that they were very confident using the internet. And part of this is uh, the fact that there is such a wide range of ways to use the internet and new applications of the technology coming through all the time. Um, even as people become familiar with uh, various tools, there's always new ones uh, coming in that they need to learn and it can take time and, uh, and energy to, to learn those. So that can cause people to feel left behind or that they're lagging in their knowledge and confidence. Um, and we see this in the survey findings. When it comes to specific online activities among both consumers and small businesses, confidence is highest with what we might dub basic online activities, things like sending an email, finding information online or buying products online, that type of thing. But when it comes to more advanced activities, things that require a bit, bit more skill, uh, such as posting content online or anything related to cybersecurity, we see less than half of uh, consumers and small businesses telling us that they're very confident with those things. So which brings us to those concerns related to cybersecurity and privacy. There is a lot of concern that uh, consumers and small businesses voice through the survey about online scams, hackers, and fear of their personal data or, or their business data being misappropriated. And these are by no means back of mind concerns. These are very much front of mind. People are very conscious and vigilant about these threats. And I think that plays a big part in undermining their confidence when using the internet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if, if those concerns are, um, uh, having an impact, I would imagine, on um, people's preparedness to use the internet and possibly we're not, as a country, getting the full benefit of the internet um, because people are holding back a little bit. Um, is that what the survey reveals? Yeah, we do see that the, that fear and, and concern around online security and, and, and privacy um, serves as a barrier to people using the internet more often. So um, from a list of potential barriers and things that might prevent people from doing more online, uh, it was those fears that really came through at top of the list ahead of things like connectivity or reliability of service issues, which mm -hmm. we might have thought were, were, were key barriers. In fact, it's, 
it's that fear of scams and uh, of uh, online activity being private that that is really the biggest obstacle to be overcome for both groups. Uh, again, we see that uh, interesting balance uh, or pivot point that it's it's not so much about the technology. It's the social issue around behaviour and confidence that's holding me back. Um, so a, a matter that we'll keep coming back to, I'm sure. So um, does the research give us any clues on what might be done to turn this around so that we grow confidence and make more and better use of the internet? Yeah, absolutely. So despite this vigilance and uh, use of online security behaviours, people remain fearful about um, security of their personal data online and they recognise the need to continue to increase security measures to stay one step ahead of the hackers and the scammers. So we see in the research a strong demand for ongoing information and education about how to stay secure online. And this is true across the board from the lightest to the heaviest internet users. Mm -hmm. They want to know things like how to spot a scam, how to keep their personal data uh, secure online or their employees or clients data in the case of small businesses and uh, what to do in the event of a cybersecurity breach, who to turn to, where to get that support from. So reflecting on that, I think to some extent there is a role for businesses and organisations, including big, big, big business and government, uh, who interact with consumers online to continue to provide reassurances about the security measures that they have in place to give consumers that peace of mind uh, about their uh, online security when using their websites or, or their apps. And I think that needs to be explicit, that reassurance. It, we need to go beyond just having the padlock symbol in the URL bar, for example. Mm -hmm. um, the report highlights the need for a singular, well-known, credible and authoritative source of support for information uh, about cybersecurity somewhere that people can turn to for information and practical guidance. Right now, people uh, say they don't have this, or at least they're not aware of any such source. Um, what we see is that uh, if consumers need information or support with cybersecurity issues, typically they're turning to friends or family members or looking it up themselves using search engines. Some small businesses have IT experts that they can lean on, but it's by no means all of them. In fact, it was less than half of the small businesses surveyed said that they have this support available. So it's yeah. all of those things, a, a, a single point of credible and practical advice and guidance on how to stay secure online. Mm -hmm. And you just made the really interesting point, Keith, that it doesn't seem to matter um, how much um, use different people and groups are making uh, of the internet. Um, their confidence uh, is uh, the same uh, around cyber security. Have you got any insight um, from the survey on why that concern might be the same even when the use is different? Yeah, certainly um, when it comes to cyber security and those concerns, um, as you say, that it, it's ubiquitous um, from uh, people who are very heavy internet users doing lots of online activities through to the lightest users. And I take from that that um, with the heavy users who you might expect to be more confident and, and, and be less concerned about those things, they're doing so much more online, they've got so much more to lose or so much more to protect. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess there's a, a bit of that uh, behind those numbers um, where you know, people want to take advantage of these new applications and these, these new online activities, but need that constant reassurance that it's safe to do so. So it, it sounds to me like we might need a, a really simple campaign the way we um, uh, developed one for um, uh, sunburn, you know, that problem when we're all worried about that and we got to slip slop slap 
over generations and you know everybody knew what they had to do and uh, were quite confident so um, a topic for uh, much discussion in the future. So talking about the future, um, uh, the survey uh, went to what it is that Australians might want to do online in the future and how they might want to um, use the internet in different ways. I wonder if you could just talk to us about the findings in that area for a little bit. Yeah, so as we said, people really recognise the many benefits that the internet offers and the range of online activities that consumers and small businesses undertake will only continue to increase in the future. We, we asked uh, survey participants how they feel about these future possibilities of the internet. And I think, as you said in your introduction, the response was overwhelmingly positive. They told us that they feel happy, excited, intrigued and inspired, and, and most of all, hopeful. So that says a lot about the future outlook. Um, I should note, however, that for some, especially older consumers, this optimism was tempered with a sense of apprehension. And some also said that they found it overwhelming to think about. For small businesses, uh, another finding that's highlighted in the report is that one in seven small businesses don't currently have a website, but would like to create one. So that's another big opportunity and another indication that small businesses are also eager to increase their online presence and activity and continue to tap into those benefits that the internet can provide. And just following on that theme, you um, were highlighting, um, you know, the slight difference with older Australians. Were there other differences that you found in demographics, old, young, um, regional, uh, capital city, um, uh, people for whom English is not their first language, um, others so, um, male, female perhaps? Yes, indeed. Um, it was. It's interesting to see just how different the online experience is for different demographic groups. Um, a lot of that's detailed in the report, but just to give a few examples, um, look, some are very much as you might expect. Uh, for example, younger people being much heavier internet users and placing much greater importance on the internet, which makes complete sense when you think they've grown up with this technology and they have more opportunities to use it in everyday education and workplace settings. Um, people from cultural and linguistically diverse backgrounds, uh, so people who are born overseas and who use languages other than English, uh, were more likely to feel the internet was invaluable um, and they were more likely to depend on it for their job. They were also among those who especially value the internet for the ability to main, maintain contact with family and friends. There's a cohort within the sample who are self-employed and who work from a home office. This group, unsurprisingly, was more vocal about the value of the internet in terms of enabling them to work and generate income. So they're more dependent on the internet in that aspect of their life. Um, these freelancers wouldn't exist without the internet. Uh, among small businesses, the greatest differences were between sole traders and employing businesses, uh, where sole traders are generally less active online. But more than that, they the sole traders reported uh, lower use of cybersecurity behaviours, the lowest spend on cybersecurity, and they were less likely to have that professional IT support that they could lean on. Um, uh, in addition, sole traders were more likely to have concerns about their own ability and competence using the internet. So thinking about all of that, here we have a large group that the research suggests could really benefit from more support and guidance in terms of how they can use the internet safely and leverage those benefits that it can provide their business. Terrific. That's great. Now, I have a couple more questions, um, but I'm mindful that uh, I promised our audience an opportunity, Keith, to grill you about the um, report. Uh, so I might just take a moment to check with Mike about how our audience questions are coming along and uh, go to those. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Rosemary. The, the audience questions are starting to come in, but maybe if we ask Keith one more, we'll... Uh... Well, we'll wait for a few more to build up. And I'll probably take this opportunity as well to remind the audience we have put the report link in both the Q&A and the Zoom chat if they are looking for the report. 
Terrific. All right. Well, I'll, I'll ask uh, <laughs> one more, um, and that is um, that is really the the big question. I mean, we do this research. Uh, not to get a glossy and marvellous looking report, although we do have one of those. Um, <laughs> it's not our intention to take a glossy report and put it on the shelf. Um, we actually want to turn the dial positively so that the experience of Australians, consumers and small businesses with the internet um, continues to be positive and the opportunities um, grow. So um, if you hold the pen, Keith, uh, what would be the key takeaways um, from the report uh, for government or industry? Yeah, sure. Look, there are three things that I would point to. Cybersecurity, connectivity and government services. Starting with cybersecurity, we've talked a lot about it. It's a big issue um, you know, that, that, that needs focus and needs to be addressed. Um, Australian consumers and small businesses must have confidence in the online environment and in their ability to leverage all the benefits that the internet can provide today and into the future. Part of this is raising awareness of existing resources, so such as the Australian Cybersecurity Centre, and as you uh, hinted at, embedding cybersecurity behaviours in the same way that we've embedded road safety or sun safety behaviours, for example. With connectivity, we've not talked much about it um, today, but there, there is uh, some uh, coverage of that issue in the report as well, and it's overshadowed by cybersecurity to some extent, but it's a not in insignificant issue for many people as well. Um, perhaps surprisingly, though, it's not just an issue for regional Australia. Those in capital cities are just as likely to have concerns about connectivity and the reliability of their internet service. In fact, those in capital cities are, are more likely to say that the reliability and the speed of their inter internet connection is very important, which makes sense when you consider those in capital cities are heavier users of the internet, more dependent on the internet for work. Um, and indeed, the, the group that we mentioned earlier, the freelancers uh, were by far the most likely to mention connectivity issues as a source of frustration. So again, there needs to be reassurance of a reliable internet service that everyone can access and benefit from. And finally, one that was a genuine surprise in the survey data was how positive consumers are about being able to access government services online. I suppose when we reflect on it, that in, in some cases, it, uh, it used to be a, a time consuming, uh, annoying even experience accessing some of those services in person or in an offline format. Uh, so what this tells us is that consumers absolutely see the benefits of moving these government services online. For example, completing your tax return is so much easier and faster than it used to be. Likewise, renewing your passport or your driver's license or accessing other government agencies via the MyGov website. So for government audiences, I would say, continue to look for ways to utilize the internet to, to, to build that efficiency and functional value for Australians. Terrific, that's some great messages and, and positive and constructive things that people can do in response to these findings. That's terrific. Um, back to you, I think, Mike. Thanks, Rosemary. Um, the, the first question is actually to you, Rosemary, about uh, um, why Outer uh, conducted this research? You did touch on it earlier, but um, can you tell us a bit more about what it what it means for Outer and and uh, the work we do? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, and, and thanks very much um, to whoever asked the question for the opportunity. Um, the the essence of this um, is that. Um, we do our task at Outer, which is the specific task of running Australia's bit of the domain uh, of the internet, Australia's domain name system.au. Um, but we do that for the benefit of all Australians. And what we were really keen to do was to ask Australians what, in their opinion, in their voice, they thought were the benefits of the internet in their lives and in their businesses. And along with asking that question, we just wanted to see whether there was anything holding people back. I mean, being the uh, administrators of uh, .au, Australia's part of the internet, we're, of course, really keen for Australians to get all the benefits that they possibly can, whether they are social benefits or economic benefits. Uh, so to understand how people are thinking about the internet, 
what's holding them back would put us in a good position to think about our own contribution to innovation um, and also to be able to provide this information and share it very, very widely, which is our intention um, with government, with policymakers, with industry people, uh, perhaps even with um, community groups. Uh, the information that we've got about how Australians value the internet for social connection and information and hobbies um, suggests to me that there is use of the internet that can be made by a whole range of community service organisations uh, who might not be thinking that way at the moment. Um, so our intention with this is to take the voice of Australians uh, on the topic of how I use the internet and how I feel about that uh, into all the places and spaces where people are making decisions, um, whether they're decisions about how to support the community, how to engage with the community, how to do business with the community. Uh, we want everybody to understand uh, what Australians are thinking about the internet and to use that information in their decision making. Thanks, Mike. Rosemary. Um, we've had a, another question about the longitudinal nature of the study, um, and I think this probably goes to both you and Keith, Rosemary, a bit of a crystal ball gazing, but um, given uh, we are looking to do the study year on year, um, are there any trends that, uh, that we think might pop up or, or we're particularly focused on? Um, maybe you want to take the first bite, Rosemary, before we throw it to Keith? Yes, for, for sure. Um, uh, my interest uh, in um, conducting this research now um, is uh, I think we are at a pivot moment where we are now finally, after 25 years of discussing digital transformation, I think we're now seeing it big time. And we've seen the digital transformation of everything up to and including your local coffee shop. Uh, when we couldn't get into the coffee shop, we still found a way of getting our coffee using online ordering and advance ordering and so on. Um, so the innovation that uh, we witnessed at Auda as hundreds of thousands of tiny little businesses uh, registered domain names to enable them to keep going during the pandemic the use of the internet for health services, for education services, for critical information services around COVID developments. Um, that digital transformation, we saw that in every part of the economy and the survey highlights uh, the importance of all of that in social connection. So we think we're at the beginning of a really important journey and we're keen to understand what it is that Australians are doing and worrying about so that we can support that digital transformation, which we think is uh, a decades long transformation of the whole economy. So the longitudinal nature of the survey allows us to see some issues, uh, encourage responses, and then see whether the responses to the issues are actually driving more opportunity. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, sure. So, look, uh, one thing I've learned over the many years uh, as a researcher is is not to preempt what consumers think or, or feel or do. But um, you, you, the question's been asked, so I'll have a go. But there's probably things that we'll ex we might expect to see, and then things that we might hope to see um, when the research is done in 12 months time again. Um, in terms of what we would expect to see, I would expect to see some change in how people use the internet, the types of activities that they're engaged in. Um, I know there is other research that measures, you know, purely measures prevalence of online behaviours. And if you look at the time series of that research, um, video calls and, and video conferencing went from a blip to one of the, you know, the, the main uses of internet technology in the space of the last two years, um, which was, you know, the, the pandemic has obviously been a, a huge catalyst for that shift in behaviour. Um, and, and that's, I think, what we'd be looking out for is, you know, Hopefully, touch wood, post-pandemic, as, as we come out of this, um, some shifts in behaviour reflecting that. Um, in terms of what we'd hope to see, obviously, the, the research highlights a number of concerns and issues, and with the right attention and focus from the right parties, we'd hope to see things like that confidence score going up, with uh, more mm -hmm. people being more confident uh, in the online environment, and uh, concerns about, you know, uh, 
uh, online scams and hackers and, and, and data privacy, we'd hope to see that going down. So that's you know, not to say that it will, um, but um, you know, that's what certainly things we'll be looking out for in 12 months time. Terrific. Um, we've, uh, we were talking a bit about the, the lack of confidence and, and particularly concerned about there being no single source of cybersecurity information. Um, Keith, what, are you, what, what is the, uh, I guess, did you have any insight into what consumers are actually looking for? Is it a, a single website? Is it a, is it a single authority that they're, they're trying to uh, identify with? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's exactly that. And um, you know, be careful with the language to say that there isn't one because there obviously is one with the Australian Cybersecurity Centre. So it's really about um, raising awareness of, of that body and and all the great um, resources and information that they make available to people. So um, yeah, I think really that's the the the, the idea there is that that uh, website or, or that resource becomes more well known um, and, and and used more by a wider range of uh, Australian consumers and small businesses. But I think you know, what people are looking for is they want clear information, they want very practical guidance and steps um, on those things, like how do I identify a scam? What do I do if I think I've experienced a cybersecurity breach? So really breaking it down into what those specific fears and concerns are and, and giving clear information and guidance around those. And Rosa, probably one final question given the, the time. Um, but we had a, had a question about what business, businesses such as organisations can do to improve consumer confidence on cybersecurity. Uh, if we were giving any tips to, uh, to other CEOs out there um, or from, from taking this research, what do we think the business can do to, to help? Look, I think um, we got some uh, guidance on that um, from an earlier answer that uh, Keith was providing. Um, and I think the essence of it is we've got to make a shift from communicating in technology or technical terms, for example, putting a little padlock uh, in the URL bar, we've got to learn how to communicate with consumers in language and ways that really connects with them and what they are trying to do. Uh, so I think it's around simple tools, it's about simple messages, um, it's about what action I can take to be in control of things. And um, in that sense, it's relatively straightforward. It's being careful about passwords. It's being careful to make sure your people are trained to identify um, emails and the like that they shouldn't deal with. Uh, it's making sure to update software. So I think there's a number of simple steps, but we've got to uh, find the way of communicating that in uh, so that it connects. I think that's the gap that we're seeing. We've, we've got all the knowledge. We're just not in, not connecting with the audience. Terrific. Well, thank you for that. Um, I might hand back to you now, Rosemary, given the time. Um, yes, you. and I, I'll bring the uh, session to a close. Let me just firstly uh, thank you again, Keith and SEC Newgate in supporting us in the delivery of this first uh, important report. Um, it's given us much food for thought and um, many different responses. So thank you to the audience for coming and listening and I'm sure thinking about uh, what part you might play in improving the online experiences and confidences for Australians. Um, this is our last webinar in 2021, um, but we're planning to resume again in February 2022. We'll put updates uh, on our website and social media. And those of you who are out of members now, uh, or will be very shortly when you join, will receive uh, regular updates. And for our members, we're very happy to be hosting a Christmas networking event in Melbourne um, from 5 to 7 p.m. on the 15th of December. If you're in Melbourne, please come and join us. Uh, registrations are essential, but again, back to our website. Uh, for members based outside of Melbourne, we're really looking forward to seeing you in uh, the new year at some in-person events that we're in the planning stages of organising. So if we don't see you again, have a wonderful holiday season from all of us at Outer. 
have a relaxing break and bounce into 2022. Thank you very much. Bye all.